some of the international developers in international locations mm -hmm. providing world-class quality. Our vision very clearly is to make real estate and infrastructure development cleaner, leaner and more greener with a pledge to save more than one crore trees through using aluminium formwork and replacing the traditional plywood. Our pledge is championing to reduce, reuse and recycle using aluminium formwork not just for you, but also for the environment. With that, I'd leave you with a short video of our brand ambassador. inviting each one of you to come and visit us at our factory, come and see what we do and how we do it most importantly and give us an opportunity to help you transform your buildings into a world-class product. Thank you. Request you to kindly come, up, come back on stage. We would like to felicitate your presence. And I would also request Shilpa Ma'am to kindly join him on stage. We would like to felicitate your presence as well. And to felicitate Mr. Ralph Pregun, I would request Ms. Ketki, Ms. Sukanya, and Ms. Pradhanya to kindly come up on stage to felicitate Mr. Ralph with a memento. working environment through best practices in HR, regular speaker at top industry events, regular contributor to various industry news coverage, two-time TEDx speaker, triathlete and Iron Man, but I think we can call her a superwoman. Please put your hands together for Ms. Dinupa Shankar, Joint Managing Director at the Brigade Group. Welcome ma'am. I don't know how many of you would be interested in tech and real estate, but you know, earlier this uh, morning we had IAS officer uh, D. Tara talk about how important it is to adopt technology and especially sustainable technology into our businesses. I see a lot of uh, startups here, especially in the green space, so I hope this will be of uh, relevance to all of you. So when we look at our business, right, we always ask ourselves, how can we stay ahead of the competition? What will uh, help us be ahead of the curve? And when we think of how do you stay in the game and how do you be future ready, you have to think of your business as to where will the industry be 10 years from now and how do you prepare for that. So with that, I wanted to share what the industry, the prop tech scene in India looks like. It's a very nascent, uh, it's a very nascent industry. I think seven to eight years ago, words like prop tech, con tech, real tech really didn't exist. But now, of course, uh, prop tech is a very rising space. 
and uh, just to show you some of the investment that has gone into PropTech. Uh, for instance, just since uh, 2020, we've had $2.4 billion invested in this space and almost $2.5 billion has just been on 39 deals in late stage startups. So um, we've had also early stage, but that's received a smaller part of it. And you'd be interested to know that this is an up and coming space. So today there are only four unicorns in this space. But there are 10 soon to be unicorns. So it's a, it's a rising space. Um, and all of us who have startups that are relevant to the real industry are very much part of this game. Um, quickly, just to let you know, startups account for about 6% of all the startups. Uh, prop tech startups account for 6% of all of those in India. And uh, as I said, some of the unicorns you might have heard, uh, like No Broker or Oyo or Live Space or India Intramart. Um, these are the unicorns that have come up in the space and sunicorns are more in the living like uh, home furnishing space like sell homes from a you know all of us had to sell homes while we were still uh, when, when nobody was coming to the site when there was still lockdown so a lot of people started focusing on how do I sell my business online and that was a catalyst to uh, adopting technology in the space uh, prop tech funding has actually been growing at 49% year on year since 2010. So that is the kind of interest the space is seeing. Now, any conference you go to, people are talking about the importance of sustainability in construction. I'm sure a lot of the large developers have given net zero goals. Okay, I want to be net zero by 2050. I want to be net zero by 2045. So this is how prop tech has risen. Um, you know, in 2005 and 10, we used to have these uh, e-commerce websites like Magic Bricks, 99 Acres, No Broker, Housing.com. In 2010 to 2015, we had the shared economy, like um, shared, uh, like Oyo, Zolo, Office, co-working spaces. In 2015 to 19, it was more data analytics, fractional ownership, property management, and now, of course, as I mentioned, the, there's a huge focus on construction tech and uh, sustainability. So why real estate? Why is this focus on real estate and why India? I'm sure all of you know um, this, is the, this is the housing gap we see in the country. Uh, we have a similar population like China, but um, in terms of housing, there's a 15x gap. Um, China is 3x, three times bigger than India, but still there is, the population is the same and they will all need homes. And there is a huge demand for housing as we all know. India still has the highest GDP across uh, all countries in the world. So it is the fastest growing nation and real estate will hit $1 trillion by 2030. So real estate contribution to India's GDP will grow from 13% to 17%. And that is why there's a huge focus on housing. And the way we can reach this is only through technology. This we all know. We all know that we have very populated and densely populated uh, cities. In fact, the top five most populated cities in India are far more densely populated than the global uh, uh, cities of the world, like New York and Tokyo. And this is only going to increase because with more people coming into our cities, the, the demand on infrastructure is only going to increase. These are some of the problems we all face in our cities. Uh, limited access to water. 30 per only 30% of, of urban households lack access to piped water. We all know that quality of air, I know being in Delhi, it is a big issue, but 39 out of the 50 most polluted cities are actually in India. Sewage, I don't know if you read, like for, I'm from Bangalore and there was a time when the lakes in Bangalore were catching fire. And the reason for that is because of the effluents that were going into the water. So untreated sewage is another aspect of the growing demands on our cities. And of course, the landfills that we all have. So our industry, we are very much part of the problem, right? If you talk about uh, the environment, we are very much part of the problem because 39% of all CO2 emissions are by the built world. Hotels like these, our office buildings, the construction industry. So as a group, we all have to do something about it and we have to find a way to be part of the solution. My belief is that development is going to happen whether you like it or not and uh, how can we do it and how can we develop in a responsible manner so again coming back to the tech part of it what is what is really happening on the prop tech side globally you know this has seen about 118 billion dollars of investment since 2010 
and India has received about 5 billion of that. It's following the same growth pattern, but we are still a fraction of it and that is why I say we're still very nascent. Off business and infra, India Intramart are examples of unicorns, as I said, they are marketplaces where you can buy and sell equipment. And why do I say PropTech is coming of age now? Um, as we said, building responsibly is a very important aspect of what we need to do going forward. A lot of countries have taken their net zero targets. India has said they want to be net zero by 2070. And, uh, uh, you know, 49 countries have said they want to go net zero. If you look at what's happening in Europe, uh, they are saying that by 2030, all buildings have to be retrofitted into green buildings. And uh, uh, new buildings, all, all new buildings have to be green by 2030 and existing buildings have to be green by 2070. So there is a huge focus on building responsibly, building clean and using green tech. Just a little bit about our journey, I came here to share about two of our uh, best practices on what we are doing for this space. Uh, we are a builder uh, out of Bangalore. Um, we work in all asset classes, office, retail, hotels uh, and of course residential. We are a public listed firm um, on, the bank, uh, on the Bombay and uh, National Stock Exchange. We have built about 100 million square feet of space um, and we have uh, GIC as our, one of our partners. So, we were uh, born on, uh, in 1986 and about seven years ago, I set up something called REIT, which is the Real Estate Accelerator Program. I know a lot of you are startups here, but the whole purpose was how do we um, use products and services from the startup industry into the real estate space. So, we have a separate team that works with startups. We give them live projects to work on. And if somebody says, hey, I've done a project for Brigade, it's very easy to go to 10 other competitors and say, this is what we were able to do for one real estate company. I'm sure we can do it for 10 others. So the whole concept of REIT, which is Real Estate Accelerator Program, is to help startups get integrated into the real estate business. And we have teams just, just to do that. Um, just last year, I, uh, we set up a fund called the Earth Fund. Why is it called the Earth Fund? Because uh, the, it, it's, it, it's to build in a more green and sustainable manner. We call it the Earth Fund for technology for smarter, greener cities. And uh, I welcome any of you to learn more about it uh, by looking at the website. Just some of the, uh, what we managed to do in seven years. We've spoken to more than 2,500 companies. We received uh, 1,200 applications for our program. We take about 10 companies a year, uh, so about, uh, we've taken, so in 7 years we've done about 70 startups, 45% of them have gone on to raise money. Some of them came to us with no customers, no revenue, and today all, we also have examples of multi-million dollar companies that have gone to the US uh, based on funding that they receive from other private uh, and venture capital funds. So without looking for it, 30% um, of these companies are in the, in the sustainability space. So some of the examples of companies we've worked with, we got as a water management company. I think today when we talk of net zero, everybody wants to, how are you what, uh, net water, uh, net zero water, net zero energy, and net zero waste. So we got as a company that saved billions of liters of water by just giving you sensors to uh, manage the water in every outlet, uh, tap outlet that you have. Smarter Dharma is a company that helps builders build green buildings. So if you have a green product or a green service, you can connect with Smarter Dharma and they will recommend them uh, to builders to use. Um, Chaza is an EV charging station. They, it can be retrofitted into your parking lots. Clairco, I think post-COVID, this company did very well. They started saying we provide COVID-free air. How do you provide COVID-free air? Because our old HVAC systems, had uh, used to filter up to 2.5 microns. COVID particle was 0.2 microns and they've come up with a filtration that can filter up to 0.1 microns. So they sold their products saying, I can give you COVID free air. Uh, LiveSafe is a company that I use, especially in our 5G world, lot of radiation. So they have patented technology to protect your homes through uh, some glass, a certain paint, a mesh, so that in my apartment, for instance, I have two cell phone towers on either side. That's a lot of radiation. Uh, but they have patented uh, software to help and protect your home and your family members from it. And Structure is a company, I think in Haryana, we see a lot of the agri-waste being burnt every year. They use that agri-waste, it's a female founder again, she uses this agri-waste and creates an alternate, uh, uh, alternate uh, green material than gypsum board. 
so again uh, this whatever technologies we mentor uh, we take it to the full industry it's not housed just for brigade it is taken to the entire industry and all our competitors and fellow builders are also giving these companies business so like i said the fund we are setting up a fund to invest in high quality startups um and we will we will invest in companies that have a play between real estate and tech or tech and sustainability or all three as well so these are some of the companies we would look at construction technologies property management renovations uh maybe even finance there is a financial play as well and uh, we would also look at a lot of green materials i'm sure some of you here will have um uh, startups in this space any materials to do with green construction or water conservation or recycling or waste management as well so that's all i had to say i hope uh, if anybody is interested you can look up brigade reap or the earth fund and we'd be happy to interact with you thank you so much Thank you so much, Ms. Nirupa, for that lovely presentation. I would request Mr. Hari Babu and Mr. Nagin Bundekar to kindly come up on stage to felicitate Ms. Nirupa Shankar. Can we have a big round of applause for our eminent speaker, please? Lakh 
but having said that, India currently has more than 3,200 universities. You know, the scale of education institutions has scaled up in the last many years. And these universities offer specialized courses for engineers across disciplines. So, we are expecting an incremental increase of about 1.8 lakh engineers to join the workforce in the next few years. And this is set to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 10.4%. Yeah. So, uh, but yes, as you rightly mentioned, there is a scale gap. So, of all the engineers who are currently uh, there, available for employment, only 50% actually go up and work on construction sites in various roles. And that is largely because there is the skills required for the job and are, it's, it's a bit ironical because the skills required for the job are not there when we have done a qualitative assessment across the hierarchy of the skilled workforce, starting from the workmen, going to supervisors, project engineers, and project managers. And it is the skill gap that we need to address when we talk about academic institutions, policy makers, and the private employment sector to prepare the workforce for the next big challenge. You know, India's real estate sector's output is set to scale up to one trillion by one trillion US dollars by 2030, and our economy is set to grow to seven trillion US dollars in the same time. So there is ample scope for development of the sector, and as well as for the employability of the workforce, the skilled workforce. I think uh, Divya, thank you for sharing this uh, research with us. Uh, I remember uh, having discussion with uh, two, three friends of me. Uh, we were talking about, uh, you know, recruiting issues like. Uh, uh, so when we went for the campus interviews, uh, even engineers were not able to uh, answer the basic questions and you know, uh, basic aptitude tests. They were not able to uh, complete. So I think uh, this is a big challenge which all of us are facing. Uh, so coming to my next question, Rajan sir. Uh, as a developer of uh, large scale um, projects, uh, you must be facing this challenge uh, right now. So, what are you, what is your take on this, and what initiatives you are taking about it? First of all, I would like to congratulate the entire mining team. I think I'm seeing from the morning, practically the hall is full. A round of applause for entire mining team as well as director security. And most important, I have been failing in my duties if I don't mention the name of Sri Durgashan Permission and Hardeep Singh Puri. Because why I am telling you this, the real estate industry is generally a male dominated industry. Very few females, even though our president and chairman, they were telling we have so many female workers. But these workers are in sales or post sales or reception in such a job profile only. So, when Durga Shankar Mishra we met, he told me, I will see all the people who are in the world. He told me his wife that only men are here. Why don't you involve some glamour in an inverted coma? What I mean to say, don't take it real sense. Some glamour to that. I did not have to see only your faces. So that's why we started and it has begun such a big this thing. Very congratulations and all the best for doing an excellent work. Of course, see real estate industry, prior to Hera, it was known as builder room. So Samne wale ke abhi bhi kafi log ke chehre pe hansi aa rahi hai matlab ek dil mein aata hai smile aata hai bilkul acha aap bol rahe ho wo mann mein kya sochta hai pata nahi hai but thanks to rera and uh, once again i would like to tell you rera ko has played a very very vital and important role in following the rera coordinating with the government because when I am telling you, Bilbao, I am telling you, 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 I am tel
of respect was not at all there in real estate industry. Even though in R is there in real estate, but R of respect was missing. So when Rera came, we thought that this is the one thing which is going to differentiate us from men from boys. So automatically we thought that this is the thing which we should do. And one, I had one conception and a proven track record that whichever industry is regulated, it was doing well. So, I thought that I would follow the Atma Mantra. No doubt we did it. Because skilling is very, very important. I always feel where there is a gap, you have an opportunity. So, skilling was not treated as important aspect. Who did ask me to do that? 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 But now the times have changed. We are born into multi-story. Delivery is fast. Rera has come. Rera is once again coming for quality. You have to give defect liability, quality for five years guarantee. So everybody has become responsible. And answering you, your question, once again the credit goes to Arishan Puri and our Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Whenever we used to go to Mowa for any work, they used to tell you, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. I'll be very honest, skinny turnings and Mujay as a developer, there's a quick idea of Usman Kittanika when we started 5-6-7 years back. Now I know how important it is. But because they forced us, we went into skilling. Once again, I would like to give credit to the entire skilling team at Secret Gate. They have already trained more than a lakh people. A round of applause I think they really deserve. Yeah, but the numbers can be increased, provided each and every developer feels the importance. And he says to it that his people working in their organization get skilled. Most important aspect, ma'am, the way you are telling, they were ingenious, but they are not proper. Because our education system, what happens? We just treat them here. Sir, we need to come to that with uh, Jyoti, ma'am. Uh, yeah. She's from academia. So, so that's a missing link which we should bridge the gap and where everybody is playing an important role. Thank you so much, Shikri, for this uh, question. Uh, first of all, I would uh, really like to thank uh, Nariko Mahi for inviting me for this session. And I'm really, uh, you know, feeling privileged and uh, it's exactly a pleasure to share uh, the space here with such eminent speakers and of course hearing from the Parmashri awardees here. It is just like, you know, uh, uh, you know, you, I was just talking to Ma'am, so, uh, and then I, I was actually sitting there and realizing that okay, we have a lot of life, we have a lot of but then after hearing their stories, uh, and then we realized that we have done as compared to what they have gone through. So really, I mean, round of applause for uh, Ma'am and for all uh, you know, the women, women sitting here. And the other, uh, you know, amazing experience that I am actually, uh, you know, getting here is, uh, I, I was also of the same opinion like you said, sir, that uh, real estate or construction sector is always meant to be for, uh, you know, for men. But uh, after, uh, you know, having introduced to Narito Mahi and I have seen such beautiful women here and all leaders, like all, all uh, you know, uh, all, all owners of their own spaces, like this is, this is amazing and, and this is actually very, very inspiring. So coming to your question, uh, you know, Shreetal, so, uh, like uh, what Divya just mentioned, um, and this is also, uh, it's, it's, a, it's actually eye opener for us also, that uh, this is, uh, the, the, uh, you know, there's so much of scope in this uh, sector, but the skilled professional is very, very minimal as compared to, and, and which is like 19% only. Uh, however, I would also like to share the other side of the story, and that is uh, that we, when we talk about skilled professionals, so we are, I think, somewhere restricted to uh, only the white collar, uh, you know, uh, people, white collar uh, uh, candidates. And because you also mentioned about the uh, engineers, uh, the diploma holders, but there are a lot of other, uh, you know, uh, segment which is which is I think not covered or not accounted for within the skilling. 
And I would like to um, also share some facts that uh, from the from the government uh, initiative and under uh, you know under the ages of Minister of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, uh, National Skill Development Corporation (NSCC) has uh, trained about 4.5 lakh, 4.50 lakh uh, you know candidates within the construction and real estate uh, segment over the last uh, you know uh, uh, five years. Um, where uh, where is, uh, there are about 50,000 apprentices also within this space. Uh, however, and then of course, 20% uh, of them would be uh, the female, uh, you know, workforce. Uh, however, what we have seen is um, that you know the, the job roles or the trades which are limited uh, to uh, you know maybe the carpentry, uh, you know, uh, uh, home and work. Uh, and, and uh, the other construction uh, job, but not not very really aspiring ones. So this is something that maybe uh, we have to together. I think we have to we have to uh, you know uh, break that mindset that okay construction is only about the carpentry or you know uh, plumbing or electrician. Uh, so uh, this is this is one thing. Um, there, there are a lot of initiatives. Uh, through different schemes, which is one of one of which is the biggest uh, flagship scheme of the government of India, Minister of Civil Development, is the PMKPY. Then there is a uh, there is other uh, you know uh, uh, a scheme which is called recognition of prior learning. Now that is very most popularly known as RPL, and which is actually recognizing the skills of those people who are uh, in the workforce, but they are they have not got got any. A formal certification, formal recognition. So it is a scheme for recognizing those, uh, you know, skilled professionals. Um, then there is a, a, a very good initiative from the government is the apprenticeship, uh, you know, program. Now within the apprenticeship program, so this is actually about, uh, you know, industries coming forward and uh, engaging the skill, engaging in skilling of the, uh, you know, of the of the uh, unskilled candidates. Uh, like uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, Adi Tharamam also mentioned, like within the real estate uh, you know, segment also, there have been a uh, private sector which is actually investing on uh, on this segment. So uh, here equally, we would actually uh, you know uh, like to encourage the private sector to also invest, come forward and invest on scaling. There are a lot of schemes which have been introduced by the government, and we would actually request it. All the private sector come together and uh, you know awareness opportunities. So I would uh, now I think give uh, my uh, call to you. Uh, thank you, Mankuri, for your uh, insights. Uh, next, I would uh, like to ask question to uh, Professor Jyoti Rana, since you're from academia. So, uh, what do you think like of the topic of manpower? How it is affecting the curriculum and teaching methods? Do you think any adjustment you need to make? First of all, thank you very much for having me here and I'm completely delighted to join this panel discussion and congratulations to all organizers for uh, organizing this convention uh, and exploring the areas which are unexplored. It's very important to explore those areas which are unexplored and very rightly said uh, by uh, Rajinji, that is, uh, uh, this is an area where which is meant uh, for men only. And uh, thanks to you for adding uh, beautiful brains uh, to these conventions, I think. And definitely, uh, this edition must have brought certain very, very concrete steps. As far as my question is uh, concerned, so definitely, uh, because uh, Pankri uh, also highlighted and Divya also highlighted uh, that there is a gap, gap between industry and academia. And there is a responsibility of the academic institutions to fill that gap. And that brings a point to revise the curriculums. If I look, uh, if I look at the curriculum of, uh, you know, diploma holders and engineering students who are joining this field. So you will be surprised to know, it's in just a rough calculation I am just sharing with all of you, that out of 46 
subjects, courses. Only 14 courses are practical. And uh, 14 pre courses are practicals and those practicals are not being done uh, in the field uh, in the form of hands-on training. They are not being taught, they are not being given a chance uh, to do things, uh, you know, hands-on. As well as construction field is, uh, is uh, related. So I think one student must be knowing after completing the graduation or uh, completing the course, that person should be, uh, you know, able to understand how the estimation has to be done, how the surveyor uh, things are to be done, and how material handling is to be done, how uh, quality and standards, uh, you know, are to be measured and to be weighed. So, I don't think so that the students who are completing their education and their graduation or diploma, they are able to do that because there is a deficit of hands-on training. So there is a need to revise all these things and where uh, the need and need of skill university uh, from which I belong to, which is Vishwakarma Skill University. So that, that is why this university has come, because there was uh, some gap, uh, you know, somewhere. And in our university, what we are doing, uh, we are uh, sending the students uh, for on the job training. So we call it on the job training. The students are going in the industry. They are they are taking hands on training and they are learning before they complete their curriculum. So that uh, so that they are fully trained and they are absorbed by the industry. And they can start their own ventures also. As far as uh, university is concerned, you know, the recognition of prior learning as a company was also highlighted that we are doing wonderful work in this area. And this was the university who understood that there are some um, experienced holders who really cannot uh, have degree and their aspirations become very, very low. So by thinking so, these type of initiatives are also being Taken. So definitely there is a need to look at the curriculum, there is a need to understand what exactly this industry feels and industry requires and that is to be incorporated in the curriculum. Thank you Professor Kuti. And uh, my last question is to Tina. Uh, Tina, you will have to give a very crisp answer because we have already um, time. Uh, so the question is, uh, like uh, we just discussed about different challenges. So as a construction material supplier, how do you look at this challenge? And are you facing similar challenges? Definitely, I think the whole industry is uh, facing the challenge. So basically, I just read it recently somewhere that the uh, strength of any structure is not just in the materials what we provide, but also by the skill people who want for constructing it. So skilling is very important in the sector. Now skilling can be either your digital skills, your technical skills, your soft skills, so it's a whole gamut of skills uh, we call it. Now I'm from the manufacturing side if I talk about. Now if you want to move from unorganized to organized sector, definitely we need skilled labor. And if you want to produce world class uh, structures and you want to provide world class materials without effects, then again skilled labor is required when we want to use the uh, robots on our shop floor. And if you talk about women also, since we are representing Mahi, I would like to make a very short so because of the time. So uh, even uh, there's a lot of people who still have inhibitions as women to come and work in the real sector and the construction. So when I started, I was the only woman, and now we have 24% of my workforce is women. 